Hello and welcome to this video. To start this video I've created a new notebook in the root of our coding folder called candle underscore plot dot ipynb. And as you can imagine the intention of this one is to actually plot some candle prices. However before we start the plotting I'd like to spend a little bit of time just discussing a little issue with data types. So to start the notebook we've got import pandas as pd and import utils. I'm just going to execute that cell. That should be familiar. And now we're going to define two variables We'll call one of them pair and set that equal to euro US dollar and call one of them granularity and set that equal to h1. And now what I'd like to do is load one of our historical data files using the function we wrote in utils so that we've got a data frame of prices. So we'll say that df for data frame is equal to pd.readpickle open brackets utils.gethistdata file name and then open brackets pair comma granularity. And all being well, we should have a data frame. So let's just have a look at the first five rows by executing the head function on the data frame class. And we can see, as expected, we've got the prices that we saved a few videos ago. And that's good. Let's have a look then at the describe function on a data frame. And what this function does is it gives us a summary of the key statistics for any column that has a numerical value in a data frame. So here you can see the volume, it says we've got 3,999 of them, and then we can see some key statistics. And the thing that's really interesting about this for me is just how quickly it runs. And in fact, we've only got 4,000 rows. We could have a million rows and it would run very, very quickly. Something else you will have noticed hopefully about this is that we don't seem to have the prices summarized in here. Yet when we ran head, we seem to have a load of columns with numbers in here. So what's gone wrong? Well, if I type info, which is yet another class function on a data frame, it gives us a summary of the key information of the data frame. I think we've seen this in a previous video. We can see that the memory is 440K more or less. And the key thing here is for each of the columns, we can see what the data type is. And we can see here that volume is a 64-bit integer and all of the other columns are object. Now, in most cases in a data frame, an object would mean a string. So some characters and letters like we've already seen. So pair here is a string. Yet we know that these are numerical. So what's gone on here? Well, if I go to the Oanda API and the candles endpoint and just have a look at the response that comes back, you'll see that we get the volume here in the JSON. Here's the key volume and the value is a two. And notice there are no speech marks around this. That means this is a number. And if you go and look online, use Google or something to find the JSON specification, it'll tell you about the different data types. There aren't many, but one of them is to specify a number. In this case, it's an integer because it has no decimal. You'll notice, however, that the prices all come back as strings. They've got speech marks around them. And the time is also coming back as a string with speech marks. So what Python has correctly done is when it's read this in, it said, OK, this JSON is a string, so I'm going to save the type as a string. And this is why then when we run describe, we only get this one column. Now this kind of problem is very, very common when you're dealing with pandas, data frames, and data in general. With any database project, you usually spend at least 90% of the time doing preparation, and the actual logic and testing and looking at strategies and things is actually a very, very small part. We need to find a way of converting all of the types of these columns into a number for us. Now the good news is there's a very, very easy way to do this inside pandas. To do this, the first thing we need to do is identify the columns that we want to alter into numbers. And basically, we we want every column in the data frame apart from time and volume. So I'm going to delete this cell for now. And the way we're going to do this is using a little bit of list comprehension. So I'm going to make a new variable called non-cols and set that equal to time and volume. And we can see that we have our non-cols list here. So what we want to do is we want to get a list of all the other columns, not these. So to do that, we'll type mod underscore cols is equal to open square brackets and then x for x in df.columns if x not in non cols and now if i print this out to the console you'll see that we have all of the columns that we need to convert so what exactly has happened here then now we talked about list comprehension in a previous video but it can be a bit confusing when you first see it so i'll go over it again the first thing to look at is this df columns here you can get the list of columns on a data frame by typing the data frame dot columns and that gives us a list so what we're saying here is set mod cols equal to a list so give us a list denoted by these square brackets here. And please get us for each x in df.columns, so each value in the column, get us that x if that x is not in this list. So how this would work, it would start with x being time, would say, is it in here? Well, it is, so we don't want it. Then x is volume, is it in here? It is, we don't want it, and so on. And create us a new list 
that is simply all of the columns that aren't inside non-cols. And that gets us then a list of all the columns that we want to convert. So the last thing for us to do then is to use this list and convert these columns into numeric. And the good news is it's very, very simple. With pandas, this functionality is built in because this is a problem that exists many, many times. So we'll say that df, open square brackets, mod cols, so we're going to say in the data frame, just these columns, is equal to df, open square brackets, mod cols, dot, apply, open brackets, and pd dot two underscore numeric. And now when I type df dot info, you can see that all of the types of the columns have now been converted to something called a float 64. And a float, an integer is a whole number, and a float is a decimal number to all intents and purposes. So now if I do df.describe, you can see that we now get all of the values and statistical summaries for all of the prices inside our data frame. So that's it then for this video. This is a typical example of what will be many little manipulations we have to do on data frames to shape the data into the form that we want to be able to analyze it. And obviously a critical one that you'll come across very, very often is converting strings into numerical data and later we'll see converting date strings into dates and all sorts of stuff like that. So the next video then we can move on and actually try and plot some candles from this data. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.